Well, having just returned from Russia, I thought we might talk a little bit about the Smith & Wesson Russian models. The Russian models are all uh, based on the Smith & Wesson Model 3 frame, which was their large frame, six-shot, uh, 44 caliber top brake revolver, originally introduced in 1870 with what came to be called their American model. However, uh, uh, the orders that really put Smith & Wesson on the map and really established them financially were orders from the Russian government for, uh, for this model. And the first Russian model, Smith & Wesson, is essentially identical to the American model. It's uh, a large frame top break uh, 44 caliber in, uh, uh, with the single action top break design, uh, simultaneous ejection of cartridges. The only difference between the uh, first model Russian and the American model is the chambering. It was the 44 Russian cartridge specified by the Russian government. Uh, instead of the heeled bullet of the earlier 44 American cartridge, this took a, uh, a bullet that fit inside uh, the case, as is common with centerfire uh, uh, pistol cartridges today. The Russian government made requ a request for a number of changes to this revolver and uh, came up with what is called the second model Russian. Uh, it's also called the old model Russian. Interestingly, the first model Russian is called the old, old Russian model uh, by collectors. The terminology is delightful and confusing. But the uh, uh, features that were included in the second model, there's some, uh, some improvement in the extraction system, but uh, the Russian government wanted this very large hump on the back strap and they wanted this trigger guard spur added. Uh, the hump uh, actually makes this a very awkward revolver to use. The uh, first model was easy to use, but this makes it very difficult to uh, reach the, the hammer uh, uh, without shifting your shooting grip. Uh, the trigger guard spur, uh, there are a number of theories as to exactly what that might have been. Uh, some say it was a belt hook because the Cossacks didn't use uh, holsters. They wanted to put this through their sash and have the hook catch the sack, uh, catch the sash, I'm sorry. Um, others say it was a, a parry guard that was intended to be able to catch a saber blow and def deflect it uh, while uh, mounted cavalry. And yet another theory of thought is that it was to provide a rest for the trigger finger um, so that the uh, revolver could be carried cocked in combat uh, while on a horse without having your finger resting inside of the trigger guard and still have a firm purchase on the revolver. It was followed closely by what's known as the third model Russian. Again, it's very similar, a little bit shorter barrel. It has a large screw on the top strap to uh, remove the uh, cylinder more quickly. Uh, and again, the same typical, somewhat awkward Russian-style grip and trigger guard spur. But uh, uh, Smith & Wesson was willing to do what the Russian government requested because they, uh, they ordered over 100,000 of these guns. And they also pr proved to be quite popular in the American market. These were coming out in the 1870s, uh, many of them actually before the introduction of the Colt Single Action Army. And they uh, were very popular in the American West. Uh, uh, Smith & Wesson was turning them out just as fast as they could. They were also popular for sale to other government militaries. Uh, Japan and Turkey both bought substantial numbers of the uh, so-called Russian model. And uh, uh, actually, two other firms produced the Russian model for the Russian army, the Tula Arsenal and uh, the Ludwig and Lowe firm in uh, uh, Germany. Both made uh, revolvers virtually identical to the Smith & Wesson pattern for the Russian government. So it's a very historic revolver, a revolver that helped establish the famous Smith & Wesson firm. And also, uh, uh, despite the Russian model name, a classic revolver from the American Old West.